Hey, how you guys doing? So we have somebody here who's a front-end web developer. So I'm just going to read part of the email, and then I'm going to give you the answer to his question. So he's been a front-end developer for 15 years, had a strong eye for design, loves coding HTML and CSS, but struggled with the complexity and logic in advanced JavaScript, which, uh, as he says here, which as a front-end dev is kind of a must, or has been for the last few years. It just turns out I never got myself to enjoy that part of the coding. So, first of all, you can get there by just doing a little bit of JavaScript every day. Manipulate the DOM. Uh, use a little bit of Ajax. So don't don't be impatient about that. It will take it takes time for certain uh, level of comprehension, for a certain level of understanding to sort of sink in. That's literally because your brain has to create new neural connections. So it just takes time. It's like lifting weights, right? If you lifted, if you went to the gym and, and lifted for one week and you didn't get muscular, you don't give up, right? It's, you know, it takes time. So don't, I would suggest right now, in terms of the coding end of things in JavaScript, just do a little bit every day. Do a little bit more every day, a little bit more every day, and you see that it's going to have a positive impact. But there's more. So he continues, based on the video you did recently, I realized that I should, I should have been calling myself a web designer more than a web developer. So now after many years, I find myself in that limbo of knowing too much about code to be a designer, but too little to be a good developer. I know you said WordPress is a good option in cases like mine, so I'm getting into it and kind of like it. Are there other types of work or projects you think someone like me can be really good at? Not just being the front end dev who's great with HTML, CSS, but not so much the JavaScript, uh, puts in quote, JavaScript guy, which is a label I desperately want to get rid of. All right, so yeah, there's a huge area where you can get into. I kind of characterize it as the web professional. And this will work very well, especially in the freelance space. But you can expand that into other areas. So what is this? This is what I would characterize as the web professional or the modern web designer. This is somebody who not only knows how to build a site, get it online and make it look good, but also somebody who understands a UX, user experience. So if you know anything about UX UI, UI is user interface, UI, user interface. User interface is about making the site look good, the aesthetics of it pleasing, like my hat, or, and, excuse me, and adjacent to it is another set of skills called UX, user experience. This is a set of skills where the, uh, the professional, the designer, for lack of better terms, is able to make the site easy to navigate. So a classic example I like to give is Craigslist. Go to Craigslist. It's just a text-only site, very big site, going back to the 90s, and uh, hugely successful. And you see, like, in terms of UI, in terms of user interface design, in terms of the aesthetics of it, how it's just plain text. It's like a, a zero on 10 in terms of the aesthetics, because it's just white page with black text and blue links. It's, it's as simple as it gets. But in terms of UX, it's probably a strong 9, maybe even a 10. It is so usable, so easy to use, that it's in one of the insanely successful websites out there. Uh, they make tens and tens of millions of dollars. So that's an example of you have a highly success, successful site where it's just designed to be so easy to work with that people use it all the time. But aesthetically, its look and feel is just like garbage. So those are two things that you can uh, look at and uh, emphasize as your skills as a web designer. Somebody who does UI, UX, the aesthetics and the usability. Good UI, UX people, as, as I said many times before, are very hard to find. Uh, and they're very valuable. Now the problem with the UI, UX people, the problem that they have is that it takes an educated eye, an experienced boss or hiring manager to recognize the value of these individuals. You know, I can recognize it now because I've, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I know when I find a good UX UI guy, which I've been using someone for a decade, a decade or two now, they're super hard to find. 
So when you find them, they're hard, much harder to find than good developers. It's such a rare skill. Because it's a, it's a skill where you require both um, design skill, having the designer's eye, but also having a, a, a logical understanding of how people interact with, a, in, with an interface. This is a, it's, 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 it's an unusual combination. So yeah, that's one angle. The other angle, which I think is even greater in fact, is understanding uh, the scope of web, front end web design in the sense of how businesses and why businesses put up websites, stupid bugs, and being able to help execute on that. So what does that mean? In non-nerd words, to clarify SEO, web marketing, social media marketing, integration, understanding the tool sets that you can leverage as a web professional, integrating people's newsletters, when to integrate a newsletter, what social media sites to integrate, how to integrate them, why does they want to do podcasts, WordPress, as he mentioned in the post, when to use WordPress, how to use WordPress, understanding WordPress themes, the simple themes, the complex themes. You don't have to know everything, but just understand the landscape, understanding uh, the various WordPress plugins that are out there, and there are other content management systems like Drupal, Joomla. Then you can look at tools like Shopify, Wix, when to imp implement that, or I think Squarespace is another one. These are all tools that a web professional class slash web designer should be aware of because these are all tools that you may or may not implement depending on the needs of the client. So that's a huge part of it. That's a huge part of it. So you as a web professional, especially in the freelance space, so you go see a client and they want to put up a branding site, they want to, uh, they want to get out their message or they, maybe they want to set up something simple for their employees or something, maybe a protected area where they can log in and access information. This is not strictly development in the sense where you're building an application, but this is extremely important stuff. A lot of work is out there and it's very valuable. So if you can turn yourself into somebody who knows a little bit about code, but understands all those other things, UI, UX, uh, web marketing, uh, the different tools that are out there, newsletter systems, hosting, um, uh, you know, d backup strategies, all these things are not strictly development, they're development adjacent and developers have, not have to know some of these things. So there's always crossover. So a developer will know about hosting uh, to a certain extent. We'll know when to use a VPS, when to use shared hosting, uh, when they might want to use an AWS, which is very rare, by the way, very rare. You, you don't want to start jumping to that unless you have cloud-based stuff, unless you really absolutely have to. Um, so that's where you could go with your skills. So if you're watching this video, which I imagine you will be, what I would suggest is you look into those other areas, start putting together, beefing up your resume, if you will, your skill set, so you understand that. Doesn't mean you have to learn about every newsletter out there, but learn about you know Mailchimp integration, Get Response, or others. Uh, understand the basics of WordPress. Understand some of the more popular plugins, that kind of stuff. If you do that, and the other things I mentioned, uh, hosting options. You know when to use. You know, I'm I'm a big advocate of using hybrid uh, VPS hosting solutions. So you have unlimited bandwidth, you have control over your resources, it's virtualized, they take care of the backups and the restores and all this kind of stuff. You know, uh, the typical business owner, the typical suit is not going to understand any of these things, right? They're going to have no understanding of these things. So it's kind of cool that you as the web professional would provide this knowledge. You know, you know what, given, I'll give you an example. So your boss says to you, hey, you know, we need to set up a blog. We want to put out articles, let people know about what's going on. Um, and for our client, for our um, employees, perhaps, we want to have, uh, we want to put out private videos every now and then about what's going on. So we need to password protect these things. So only our, our, uh, only our, our, um, our employees will know about it, be able to access these videos. What do we do? So, you know, you having some knowledge, as I just discussed, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, WordPress will work good. WordPress got a ability to password protect any posts that you want you don't have to do anything or we can uh, maybe create a custom plugin to uh, update that capabilities I'm mentioning that because I'm actually doing that for unclesteph.com I put in a blog it's WordPress based I'm going to be uh, uploading custom content 
uh, for the mentoring uh, program, uh, premium content, if you will. It's an easy way to, uh, to deploy it. Damn bugs, bugs everywhere. So when it comes to the coding end of things, you know, I, one of the problems we have today is there's so much information out there, so many videos on how to learn JavaScript, how to learn Python, how to learn React. The problem is so many people who are doing these videos, A, I can tell you a lot of them have never been in the field. A lot of people who just do tutorials and they've never actually worked in the field, I can tell you. Know, anybody who's experienced sees that right away. These guys have never done anything for real. So that's number one, it's a problem because they're going to emphasize things that shouldn't be emphasized. And number two, an even bigger problem, a lot of these people, one the 99% of them don't know how to teach. So if you're already uh, well-versed in the fundamentals, then to learn React or to learn some you know, advanced JavaScript from, from some, some individual who doesn't know anything about teaching, you can handle it no problem because you know your fundamentals. But if you're trying to learn something new, if you're a total noob, you're trying to learn programming, whether it be JavaScript, Python, whatever it is, Java, and you're having a hard time, you have to find that good teacher. You have to find, and I'm not tooting my own horn, whether it be me or somebody else, but you have to find a good teacher. Trust me, it's huge. The good teacher is extremely important in the beginning stages of the process. Once you got your head wrapped around it a little bit, you can go see any crappy teacher who doesn't know what the hell they're doing and you'll be able to learn because you already have your basics. So that's the other thing. So for you, I would say, uh, especially if you want to get into the, the, the PHP world, the WordPress world or Drupal, and you got to learn a little PHP, not a lot, a little PHP, just the foundations, just to get your head wrapped around it. And trust me, if you've been having trouble with JavaScript, I would run over do a basic PHP course, I have one, or you can just do whatever, you, anyone you want. Just learn the basics, because what you're gonna find, mysteriously, is that when you learn PHP, it's gonna give you insight into JavaScript. And then, um, it's gonna help a lot. And, and, and by learning, and you're gonna learn PHP in a fraction of time it took you to learn whatever you know about JavaScript now. You're gonna learn it like, very quickly. Uh, you're gonna learn PHP very quickly as a result of that. And yeah, just keep doing it, you know. Some people are inclined to design and aesthetics and they take to that quick like yourself. And other people are inclined to the coding end and they're horrible at design. So if you're horrible at coding, and I wasn't the greatest coder at first as well, I had to really work at it. But once you get it, you got it. So just keep working, I would say do 20 minutes a day write a little bit of JavaScript or write a little PHP, 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, and then one day, it could be, could be uh, two, three weeks from now, could be six months from now, who knows, doesn't really matter. All of a sudden you wake up and you can, all those neural connections will be made, boop, 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 and then you're gonna understand it all and you're gonna say, wow, now I understand. And then it becomes a superpower. The reason I learned to code in the first place because I saw it as a superpower, I saw it as super valuable for uh, business and so on. For me, I wasn't necessarily wanting to be a coder. I learned to code because I wanted to put up a website for my business, which had nothing to do with tech. This was back in uh, 94. Anyway, that's it. I hope that helps. Good question. So yeah, you know, going to, to recap very briefly here. Uh, if you're not good at coding, but you know a little bit of code, then I would get into that broader, what I call, I'd characterize it as being a web professional. So you understand uh, the UI, the UX, you understand where, when to use WordPress, when, how and put, to put in a newsletter software, when to, what social network, integrating social network within the strategy for a particular business for their website. This leans heavily, by the way, if you're doing, if you want to get into freelance, this is all about freelance. This is like huge in freelance world. But it'll also be important in a business you know, that you're working at if you're working full time. If they have a a, a presence, a front-facing, a front, a front-facing presence uh, that they can, you know, vis-a-vis -vis their website. Meaning, they want to put up a website. They want to communicate with the outside world in some way. There you go. I hope it's useful. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of professional code and development and uh, all that kind of stuff. And everything I teach, by the way, everything is based on real-world experience. <laughs>